Welcome back to Igneous and Metamorphic Petrology. This is the third and final video on metamorphic facies. In this video, we'll discuss pressure, temperature, time paths of prograde metamorphism and how this idea relates to metamorphic facies. The facies con series concept suggests that a traverse upgrade through a metamorphic terrain should follow a metamorphic field gradient and may cross through a sequence of facies. This is a spatial sequence. Progressive metamorphism, though, suggests that rocks pass through a series of mineral assemblages as they continuously equilibrate to an increasingly to increasing metamorphic grade, or a temporal sequence. But the question is, does a rock in the upper amphibolite facies, for example, pass through the same sequence of mineral assemblages that are encountered via a traverse upgrade to a, that a rock through the green shift facies, etc., would experience? In other words, are the temporal and spatial mineralogical changes the same? The complete set of temperature pressure conditions that a rock may experience during metamorphic cycle from burial to metamorphism and orogeny to uplift and erosion is called the pressure temperature time path or simply the PTT path. PTT path was first introduced back in ch chapter 16 when we attempted to assess conditions experienced by progressively subducted crust and convecting mantle wedge as they move through the subduction zone complex. Metamorphic PTT paths may be addressed a number of ways. First, by observing partial overprints of one mineral assemblage upon another, in that the relic minerals may indicate a portion of either the prograde or retrograde path, or both, depending upon when they were created. We learned that thermodynamic equilibrium is generally maintained during prograde metamorphism, so that relic minerals are more common during the retrograde path, but both types have been observed. Alternatively, we can apply geothermometry and geobarometry methods to the core and rim of comp compositionally zoned and chemically zoned minerals to document the changing PT conditions experienced by a rock during their growth. Other anal analytical techniques determine the prograde metamorphism can include oxygen isotope geothermometry, fluid inclusion data, and isotopic cooling ages such as the argon-argon or uranium lead ages of the rock. These methods are typically inverse methods because they begin with the product and estimate the process that created it. Even under the best circumstances, Overprints and geothermometry can usually document only a small portion of the full pressure temperature time path. Thus, we have to rely on a forward heat flow models for various tectonic regimes to compute a more complete PTT paths and evaluate them by comparison with the results of backwards methods. Nearly all models indicate that heat flow higher than normal continental geotherm is required for typical green schist amphibolite medium pressure temperature facies series, and that uplift and erosion has a fundamental, fundamental effect on the geotherm and must be considered in any complete model of metamorphism. In this, the classical view is that regional metamorphism is the result of deep burial or intrusion of hot magmas. With the, with the idea of plate tectonics, regional metamorphism is now thought to be the result of crustal thickening and heat input during orogeny at convergent convergent plate boundaries, not simply metamorphism. Heat flow models have been developed for various regimes including burial, progressive, progressive thrust stacking, crustal doubling by continental collision, and the effects of crustal endotaxis and magma migration. Figure 25.15 illustrates some examples of model pressure temperature time paths representing common types of metamorphism. The paths illustrated are schematic and numerous variations are possible depending upon the style of deformation, the rates of thickening, heat transfer, magmatism, erosion, and other factors. Path A is considered to be a typical PTT path for an orogenic belt with crustal thickening. During crustal thickening, pressure pressures increase greater than temperature. Because of the time lag during the heat transfer, pressures equilibrate nearly instantaneously, but heat conducts very slowly through the rocks. Thus, a thickened crustal block quickly will equi equilibrate to pressure, temp pressure max, while remaining relatively cool. 
The increased thickness of the crust is rich in both large ion lithophile elements and radioactive elements. So heat flux is going to increase. Subduction zone magnetism may also deliver additional heat heating the new gener new geotherm is higher, but transient and lasts only as long as the thickened crust or subduction related heat is generated last. Erosion soon affects the thickened crust and the pressure begins to decrease before the rocks can equilibrate at the high orogenic geotherm. Temperature is still increasing due to the slow heat transfer so that the PTT path has a negative slope following P max. Upon reaching T max when cooling effect of uplift and erosion catches up to the increased geotherm, the geothermal per perturbation of the crustal thickening is dampered and begins to fade. The PTT path follows a positive slope as, as both P and T fall back while, while the rock progresses to the surface and the geotherm re relaxes. Although the exact shape, size, and position of the orogenic PTT path, such as A, may vary with the, with the constraints of the model, most examples of crustal thickening have so the same general loop shape, whether the model assumes homogeneous thickening or thrusting of a large mass, conductive heat transfer, or additional magmatic rise. Two cooling uplift variations are also illustrated by A1 and A2, making the PTT path a clockwise pattern and is considered to be the normal. We will discuss why these paths split in future videos. Path B in figure 25.15 illustrates a rock that is heated and cooled at virtually a constant pressure by magmatic intrusion and is considered to be an appropriate PTT path for a contact metamorphism. Depending upon the extent of magmatic activity and its contribution to crustal mass, any number of paths transitional between A and B can be imagined representing a gradation from high pressure blue schist metamorphism to regional metamorphism. Path C is an example of what's conventionally called a counterclockwise PTT path. It is thought to represent high grade gneisses and granulite facings represent, resulting from intrusion of large volumes of mafic magma into the lower or middle crust. The rapid introduction of magmatic heat and mass causes both pressure and temperature to increase in unison below the intrusions. This is followed by isobaric cooling because the high density of mafic magma does not lead to crustal buoyancy, so uplift and erosion is limited. Not all granulite met facies metamorphism ex exhibits this counterclockwise behavior, and two paths are commonly recognized. One exhibits a near isothermal decompression in the range of 550 to 950 degrees Celsius. The second path may represent an uplift or collapse following crustal thickening of path A. Counterclockwise PTT paths are not restricted to, to granulate faces terrains and can occur anywhere associated with high magmatic heat flow. Although the paths of metamorphic rocks follow, follow are called PTT paths, Time is not quantitatively illustrated on the PT diagram. Until recently, there was no indication of rate of pressure and temperature change, so that distance along the loop need not be directly proportional to time. As a result, many petrologists suggest that these diagrams are PT diagrams, but this description fails to emphasize the qualitative temporal component. There is a broad agreement between the forward or model type progression and the backwards, or geothermal, the geothermal barometry technique, regarding PTT paths. We assume that the general form of a path, such as path A, therefore probably represents a typical rock during orogeny and regional metamorphism. If this assumption is correct, the shape of the typical PTT path has some ins instructive ramifications. First. Contrary to the classical treatment of metamorphism, temperature and pressure do not need both increase in unison as a single unified metamorphic grade. The relative magnitudes vary considerably during the process of metamorphism. Second, Pmax and Tmax do not occur at the same time. In the usual clockwise PTT paths, Pmax occurs much earlier than Tmax. 
Tmax should represent the maximum grade at which chemical equilibrium is frozen in and the metamorphic mineral assemblage is developed. This occurs as a pressure well below Pmax, which is uncertain because the mineral ge geobarometer should be recorded the pressure of Tmax. Metamorphic grade should refer to the temperature and pressure of, at Tmax because the grade is determined via the reference to equilibrium mineral assemblage. Third, some variations on the cooling uplift portion of the clockwise path, A, indicate some surprising circumstances. For example, the kyanite to sylvanite transition is generally considered a prograde transition, as we see in path one, but path two crosses the kyanite sylvanite transition as temperature is decreasing. This may result in only minor replacement of kyanite by sylvanite during the process of retrograde processes. We'll discuss this more when we talk about metamorphic reactions. If the PTT path is steeper than the dehydration reaction curve, it is also possible that dehydration reactions can occur with decreasing temperature, although this is only likely at low pressures where dehydration curve slope is, is low. We now return to the question of whether the temporal and spatial mineralogical changes associated with progressive metamorphism are the same. In previous videos, we defined the metamorphic field gradient as the change in temperature and pressure of metamorphism along a traverse directly of metamorphic grade. We distinguish this from the geothermal gradient by the spatial progression of metamorphic mineral assemblages. We avoided the question of whether the temporal progressive changes in mineralogy of a high grade rock mimics the spatial changes. If the PTT paths are correct, the answer is now definitively no. Figure 25.17 illustrates the differences between spatial changes along the metamorphic field gradient and the temporal changes, the PTT paths, for several rocks along the gradient. Note that every rock follows a path involving considerably higher pressures and lower temperatures than the final locus of, of Tmax points along the metamorphic field gradients. Implications for this, for example with a blue schist, would be most clockwise paths appear to go blue schist early in the stages, but these are not preserved because the pressure temperatures equilibrate at lower pressures facies at a later time. This perhaps suggests that the preservation is the main reason that blue schists are relatively rare, not generation, and that blue schists may occur at other tectonic environments outside the subduction zones. This concludes our discussion on pressure temperature time paths and, and their uses in describing metamorphic facies. In our next video, we will begin talking about metamorphic reactions and how grades are defined by changes in metamorphic mineral perigenesis.